Hey guys, Mr. Backwork here. In part two of lesson 2.2, we've got two objectives. We're going to find zeros of polynomial functions, and we're gonna sketch the graph of a polynomial function based on its general characteristics. So I wanna talk about those power functions just like we were talking about in the last video. So remember, a power function is something like f of x equals x to the nth power. Now that nth power actually tells us a lot about what's happening with our function and its graph. With a power of n, our function is gonna have at most n zeros, so n x-intercepts. It's also gonna have at most n minus one turning points. So if we were looking at something like x squared, that would have at most two zeros and at most one turning point. Something like x cubed could have three zeros and two turning points. x to the fourth could have four zeros and three turning points. I think you guys kinda of get the idea. So remember, just like we were doing earlier this year, in order to find the zeros of a function, we replace that f of x stuff with zero, so we get zero equals whatever our function is, and then we solve for that x value. Now, with this, we're gonna have things called repeated zeros, so zeros that show up multiple times. So if we've got a factor of x minus a raised to the k power, where k is bigger than one, so the zero is showing up multiple times, okay, it's gonna give us a repeated zero of x equals a, and that k value, that power, the number of times that it shows up, is called its multiplicity. Now, this multiplicity tells us a little bit something about what our graph is gonna look like at this value. So if k is gonna be an odd number, that means our graph is gonna cross through the x-axis at that x value of a, but if that k value is even, then our graph just barely touches the x-axis at that a value. So in this example, we've got f of x equals x to the fourth minus x cubed minus 20x squared. And we're gonna find the zeros of the function, and then we're gonna figure out the number of turning points. And I'm actually gonna look at the turning points first because I think that's gonna be the easiest part. I see this highest power of four in here. So what that tells us, remember, we can have n minus one turning points. So that means we could have at most three turning points. Now let's go ahead and figure out where the zeros are gonna be located for this graph. So remember, we replace this f of x stuff with zero. So we get zero equals x to the fourth minus x cubed minus 20x squared. Now, in order to solve this one, we're gonna have to do a little bit of factoring on the right-hand side, and I'm looking for a GCF. I see an x to the fourth, x cubed, x squared. I'm thinking our GCF is gonna be x squared, so then we end up with x squared minus x minus 20. Now I'm gonna do a little sum and product factoring inside of those parentheses. So we've still got this x squared out in front, two sets of parentheses, we need to multiply to negative 20 but add up to negative one. So I'm thinking x minus five, x plus four. And now if we find the zeros, take each factor and set it equal to zero, x squared equals zero, so we get x equals zero for that zero. If we go x minus five equals zero, we get x equals five, and x plus four equals zero, gives us x equals negative four. So now what we're gonna do in these next examples is we're gonna kinda of combine the last two videos where we look at the shape and that leading coefficient test as well as finding zeros to help us sketch out the picture of some polynomial function graphs. So we've got f of x equals two x cubed minus six x squared. So if we're looking at its general shape, well I see the highest power is in x to the third power. So we know this one is gonna look like a cubic graph, okay, that disco graph. If we use our leading coefficient test, well, the leading coefficient is positive, so this graph is gonna to fall to the left and rise to the right. So we can kind of talk about that end behavior on our picture. Okay, down here on the bottom left, well, we know our graph is going down as we move to the left, and we know our graph is heading up as we move to the right. Now, if we go through and find the zeros of this function, we'd go zero equals two x cubed minus six x squared, very first thing I see is a GCF, and we can pull out a 2x squared from both of these things, so we get x minus three. And now taking each one of those and setting it equal to zero, 2x squared equals zero, and x minus three equals zero. We've got a zero at three. If we talk about the multiplicity of this zero, okay, this shows up just once, so it's got an odd multiplicity, so at this 
zero of three, since it's got an odd multiplicity, we know our graph is gonna cross through there. If we take a look at this one, two x squared equals zero, we're gonna get x equals zero. And since it's an x squared, it's a repeated zero, it shows up twice. So at zero, our graph doesn't actually cross the x-axis, but it just barely touches. Well, if we kind of take a look at how our graph is shaping up, it's got to go up as we move to the right. So that means that our graph is going to come up from the left, just barely touch at zero, and then it's going to have to turn from there so that it can come back down and cross through at three and continue going up. Now, it's going to be helpful for us to find a few more points just to make graphing this thing out a little bit easier, make it look a little bit better. So we're gonna plug in some other values to see if we can figure out a better picture for this graph. So I'm gonna use what we've got so far and we're just gonna start drawing out the picture. If we were to plug in zero, we're gonna get zero, since it is a zero, so we've got the point zero, zero. Similarly, if we plug in three, we're gonna get zero, since we found that thing to be a zero earlier. If we plug in one for our x value, we should end up with negative four. So we can plot that point out at one, negative four, that's down here. Uh, if we plug in two, we're gonna get negative eight. So two down at negative eight down here. Uh, if we kind of work off in the other direction, if we plug in negative one, we're also gonna get negative eight. So negative one, negative eight is down here. Um, we can't really go much further than that. If we were to plug in negative two, we'd get negative 40, but that's not gonna show up on our picture at all. So now using these ordered pairs and kind of this end behavior, I'm just gonna do a sketch of the graph. So as we go to the left, we know our graph is coming down. So it's going from that zero down through negative eight. That way it doesn't cross at zero. It's gotta turn back around and hit these other points so that it comes back up, crosses through three, and then it's heading up as we move to the right. So here's kind of a general picture. We could punch this into the calculator to get a better idea of what it would look like, but this is just a quick sketch of what our graph might look like. So doing some similar things with this one. Now we're looking at f of x equals x to the fourth power minus four x squared. So again, the general shape, I see a fourth power, so it's gonna look sort of parabolic. If we look at the leading coefficient, well, there's kind of that implied one out in front of here, that's positive. So since this thing is parabolic and it's got a positive coefficient, it's gonna go up to the left and also up to the right. Now we're gonna find those zeros so we can plot those things out and get started with drawing the picture. So zero equals x to the fourth minus four x squared. I see a GCF just like the last one. I'm gonna take out x squared. So we get x squared minus four. Uh, setting each one of those factors equal to zero, we get x squared equals zero, so that means x equals zero. This one is repeated since it's an x squared. It's repeated twice, so this one is just gonna barely touch at zero, it's not gonna cross. Um, I'm gonna plot out the point zero, zero right away since it is a zero. If we grab that other factor, x squared minus four equals zero, we get x squared equals four. Taking the square root of each side, we get x equals plus or minus two. Okay, now these are not repeated. Each one shows up just once. So we are gonna cross at negative two and positive two. I'm gonna plot out those zeros just so we can get an idea of where they're located. And now, just like the last one, we're gonna plot out a few more points. So I see these zeros at negative two, zero, and two. So maybe we wanna see what's happening between there. So maybe we plug in negative one well, if we plug in negative one, we're gonna get negative three. So plot that out, negative one, negative three. If we plug in positive one, we're also gonna get negative three. So now if we use all this to draw our picture, we know that we cross through at negative two, and it's gotta come down and hit this value of negative three, turn back around. It doesn't cross the x-axis here at zero, so it's gotta turn back around, hit this other point, then it will cross at positive two. Now it's gotta go up as we move to the right and it's also gotta go up as we move to the left. That is it as far as this video goes. Please remember to fill out the Google form linked in the description down below and thanks for watching.